Hi folks, welcome back to the B29 restoration project. So while I'm waiting on paint to dry, I figured I'd do a quick little video on making your own uh, wiring harness or servo extensions, battery extensions, whatever you want to call them. So I'm using power box wire in this airplane. Main reason why is because the insulation is a lot thinner. The signal wire is a little bit smaller since it's not really carrying any current and it's a little bit more flexible. And what that means for an airplane this size that's using over 150 feet of extension wiring is it's lighter. That is really the main reason. Um, the power box stuff is not the cheapest, but after working with it, doing the fuselage, and now I'm making up the, the harnesses for the outboard wing panels, it is very, very high quality stuff and it's very nice to work with. So enough of the yapping, let's get to work. So like I said, the signal wire here is a little bit smaller gauged than the rest of it. Um, what I have found is these Milwaukee wire strippers from Home Depot. They're 20 gauge up to, well, for stranded wire, it's 22 up to 32 gauge wire. What I have been using is 26 gauge stripper for the white wire and 24 for the red and the blue. And that seems to be a, a pretty good sizing for, for stripping this stuff since it's Theory, since it's technically uh, spec'd as a metric size. So one thing, because the signal wire is smaller, you have to strip a little bit more material, about double, and then you want to fold it over on itself. That way you, you make up the, the difference in wire size so you get a good crimp on it. So that's a little bit, they're just a little bit more, it's about three eighths of an inch which is about, I say, we'll say around nine to 10 millimeters of wire you want to strip out. So we'll strip that and then we'll twist it together to help it stay in a nice little bundle. And then I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna fold it over in half. I'm not sure how well this will show up in the video, but I'll do my best. So here we have the wire folded over in half. <clears throat> then I'm gonna take my ratcheting crimpers here these are from that word, and they are QI28BMA, Bravo Mike Alpha. That's the part number for these. These come with a set off of Amazon, and they, they work fairly well. I'm using the inboard uh, jaw here for crimping it. So I'm gonna put the, I'll put the pin in there, which is, this is another unique thing about power boxes they all use female style pins there's no male pins and I'll show you more about that here in a minute but with the the folded over signal wire we're gonna put the folded over part on the bottom we're gonna push it through well this one's gonna fight me I'm gonna twist it back together and fold it over again All right, we'll put it back in here and push it through enough to where you can see it kind of stick out the other side. That way you make sure you get wire under the crimp and then insulation under the, the insulation portion of it. And then we'll squeeze it till we hear the click and then we'll open it up and we'll take it out and then we'll just give it a pull, a tug test and that works really, really well. Since we doubled over that wire, what happens is our positive and our negative wire ends up being just a smidge longer than the other one so I've been cutting off that little bit of extra length works out to be just under eh, just around an eighth of an inch or so so I trim that and then we get the same length and then using the, the 24 gauge here we're going to strip about oh, roughly three sixteenths of an inch of wire insulation off of these two wires same thing we're going to twist the wires together so they stay nicely bundled. Again, we'll get our, our male pin here, or our female pin, I should say. We'll put it in the jaws until we hear it click once, not that many times. Let's try that again. And that initial click is just to hold it in place. And then we'll do the same thing. We'll put the wire in there until we see it poke out the other side. 
squeeze till it clicks right there. Open it up, a little bit of a tug, feels good. And then we'll go to the next pin. One thing that most people mess up a lot when they come to making their extensions, especially when you're first time you're doing it after not doing it for a while, is you'll almost always or quite often get the uh, the orientation wrong. So for a male plug, the signal is away from us. So from where I'm sitting, the white the signal wire is across. There's a, the furthest one away from us, and then our pin is set to where the locking portion is above us. But when you're doing female pins, it's also the same thing, but everything's mirrored image of it. So quite often you'll end up getting it backwards, which with the, the power box wire makes that a little bit nicer because uh, since it's twisted and not fused together, you can, you can orientate it how you need to just by untwisting it some. So we've got our three pins there. Now we're just gonna slide them here inside of our, our male servo shell. I'm gonna push them in until they click. Give a nice little pull out, a little tug on it, make sure they're, they're locked in there nice and snug. And this is where the big difference of power box is. So if this was gonna be a, ser a male connector, our wires would be backwards because here we have a proper male one and the signal is closest to the camera which is furthest away from me but here in the other one you see this the one we just did is opposite of that and the reason why is this is going to become a female connector so we have to have mirror images of them and instead of and how power box gets away from having male pins is they have female connect female pins in your shell and then they give you this little three pin header strip and it just plugs right into your male plug that we just did and then you take your little female shell here and you click it in place and now we have our female connector and it plugs right in uh, the i like this setup it makes crimping it a little bit easier to where like i said if you get them the wire is oriented orientated wrong or the the pins crimped onto the wire upside down you can just kind of twist the untwist the wire a little bit and then you can get it into the shell uh, the downside to this is the little plastic servo connectors that go on it that kind of like keepers to keep everything connected they don't fit because these are just about just around the eighth of an inch longer than a traditional servo extension or servo connector so that's one of the the pitfalls to the power box stuff that i found really the only one i found so another thing i like to do is i like to mark all of my servo extensions on both ends in this case this is a telemetry connect cable this is for the the rpm on the number one engine these little labels are actually heat shrink labels so it's a quarter this is a quarter inch um, if you're doing multiples you can get half or three eighths of an inch i typically use quarter and three eighths for almost everything but just print whatever i want to name it on there slide it into position the one here i leave about half to three quarters of an inch away from the connector and then the other end since i still have to terminate it with a connector i leave a little over two fingers worth away from the end that way it gives me plenty of room to work with and then i'll take the heat gun and i will shrink it all right all right so you're probably wondering why bother with these little labels honestly you don't have to this is just something i do the more complex the airplane the longer the extensions this really does make it easier to figure out especially if you got something with 15 20 30 servos or 12 foot long extensions like this thing has having the labels on either end on one end yeah i mean on this end you can kind of figure out what it is by what it's plugged up to but on this end you can't and you don't really know like if you don't label at all and you've got this end labeled but what's this end when you're first as, first assembling the airplane so by labeling it it really it makes doing maintenance later on a lot quicker a lot easier to where you can literally just like oh, okay i want to unplug i need to replace the ignition unit here or i want to change where this is located on the receiver or the power box or whatever it's just a little something that i like to do 
to make makes it look a little more professional and makes it a lot easier to to work on later on down the road so that, that's pretty much making servo extensions granted I only showed you one side the other side's the same way you just got to make sure you orientate the wires correctly in the shells um, I've got four three more wires to do this is all the wiring for one wing panel uh, there's one five foot extension for an aileron servo and then three foot extensions three three foot extensions for the ignition throttle servo and the rpm telemetry and i'm debating i will probably do one more four foot extension for the second aileron servos which may or may not get installed i haven't decided if i'm going to use a material for those extensions just for them to sit in the airplane so anyways that's pretty much making up servo extensions um i'm gonna go ahead and knock out the rest of these and then i'm gonna start wrapping them in this expandable sleeving. I'll start a video for that later on.